Chinese technological leaps are usually greeted by people saying China can only steal technology and not develop its own. They won't be able to say that about this. Where are they stealing it from? It's 100 kilometers an hour faster than the French or Japanese bullet trains which are world leaders in rail in 2023. It's interesting to wonder what trains this fast could do if they were in reduced atmosphere tunnels. Perfect vacuums are very hard to maintain, but tunnels with 90% of the air removed are much easier to achieve. If tunnel trains could achieve 600 kilometers an hour, would anyone want airplanes for intracontinental travel between major cities? In today's video, we will reveal to you how China built 36,000 kilometers of brand new high-speed rail in less than a decade. If this is your first time on our channel, please hit the like and subscribe button. Let's get into it right away. Imagine completing a journey that was previously estimated to take two hours in just 15 minutes. No doubt this would be amazing news if it were possible. Amazingly, China has successfully built the longest and most widely utilized high-speed rail, HSR network in the world. This awesome development will improve labor, tourism, and mobility, while also lowering greenhouse gas emissions, traffic, and accidents on the roads. At the end of 2022, the People's Republic of China, PRC, had the longest and most widely utilized high-speed rail, HSR network in the world, spanning 42,000 kilometers, 26,000 miles. The newly constructed rail lines with a 200 to 350 kilometers per hour design speed are included in the high-speed rail network. Design speed are included in the HSR network. Of all the high-speed railway networks in the world, two-thirds are found in China. Under the China Railway High Speed CRH name, the China Railway Corporation owns and operates almost all HSR trains, lines, and services. In China, high-speed rail has grown quickly since the mid-2000. The first passenger-dedicated high-speed rail, HSR line, was the Beijing-Tianjin Intercity train, which opened in August 2008 and replaced the CRH in April 2007. Except for Macau SAR, the HSR now covers all administrative divisions at the province level, as well as Hong Kong SAR. By 2020, the HSR network had a total length of slightly under 38,000 kilometers, 24,000 miles. The HSR network is expected to reach 70,000 kilometers, 43,000 miles, in 2035, continuing the development boom. Just so you know, China has three main categories of high-speed rail lines. The designated passenger lanes known as trunk lines have a maximum speed limit of 350 kilometers per hour. Regional connections and secondary main lines are built at a maximum speed of 250 kilometers per hour. Not to mention there are further intercity lines with a 200 kilometers per hour. Maximum speed design. While some are only used for passenger traffic, others are also used for rapid freight transit. On the one hand, China's need for high-speed rail has grown over time. China's average high-speed rail occupancy rate was 57% in 2012. In 2013, 2014, and 2015, this proportion went up to 65%, 69%, and 72%, respectively. Nearly 20,000 kilometers, 12,427 miles of high-speed rails were in place as of February 2016. Chinese railroads handled over 1 billion passenger kilometers and about 2 trillion ton kilometers of freight in the same year 2016, ranking them among the world's most heavily used passenger and freight railway networks. Noteworthy high-speed rail lines in China include the Beijing Kunming High-Speed Railway, which is the longest high-speed rail line in operation in the world at 2,760 kilometers, 1,710 miles, and the Beijing Shanghai High-Speed Railway, which has the fastest conventional train services in the world running on it. One of the few lucrative lines is the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway, which has been making money ever since it first broke even in 2014. In 2017, it brought in 29.6 billion Chinese yuan in revenue and had a net profit of 12.7 billion Chinese yuan. According to a 2019 investigation, just five of the 15 high-speed railway lines having a maximum travel speed of 350 kilometers per hour were able to pay for all of their expenses, including construction and operational expenditures. The Shanghai Maglev, also referred to as the Maglev Line, is the first high-speed commercial magnetic levitation system in the world. Its trains travel on non-traditional tracks and have a peak speed of 430 km per hour. China began testing a 600 km per hour. Maglev prototype train in 2020, with a 2025 launch date scheduled. In 2004, the implementation of the allegedly medium and long-term railway plan was a significant turning point in the growth of Chinese railways. 
the 2020 vision for the domestic freight and passenger railway network was the focus of this strategy, a sequence of five-year railway development plans that outlined the top projects for each of the five-year cycles were used to carry it out. Every five-year plan adheres to the medium and long-term railway plan, while also guaranteeing that the development of the national railway is coordinated with the growth of other economic sectors, social development, and the whole transportation network. When the medium and long-term railway plan was implemented, China's freight volumes were expanding at a rate of 7.5% annually. This eventually began to overload the network. On the other hand, there was a notable increase in demand for passenger transportation due to the urbanization, burgeoning economy, and rising living standards. Nonetheless, competition was severely hampered by the slow speeds on the current lines. China, thus, just unveiled a plan that called for the expansion of the country's railway network to 100,000 kilometers by 2020, of which 12,000 kilometers would be dedicated to high-speed rail. To connect all important cities, the plan also called for these high-speed passenger dedicated lines to create four horizontal and four vertical corridors. All of them run parallel to the current conventional lines, which are all either at or nearing capacity, except the hangzhou shenzhen corridor. The plan was to replace long-distance passenger traffic with the new services, leaving the current lines with just a small number of local services. Enough capacity for freight services would be guaranteed in this manner. But by 2025, 175,000 kilometers will have been covered, with 38,000 kilometers dedicated to high-speed rail. High-speed networks will thereby link almost all major and medium-sized cities, which is practically incredible for a nation like China. Imagine a nation the size of all of Europe with travel times between cities with more than 500,000 inhabitants of one to four hours and between all regional centers of 30 to two hours. Can you foresee the implications for a single nation's economy and development? Long-term gains in economic productivity and competitiveness are achieved by connecting labor markets and expanding railroad transport capacity. High-speed passenger lines free up older conventional rails for freight traffic, which is more lucrative for railway firms than passenger traffic due to freight's ability to carry greater weight at slower speeds. Passenger tickets are subsidized. Second, it provides short-term economic stimulus since high-speed rail construction boosts demand for the steel, cement, and construction sectors during recessions by creating employment. 110,000 personnel were engaged for the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Rail Project encourages the development of second-tier cities and makes inner-city economic cooperation easier. Of the secondary cities linked by bullet trains, 59% of their increased market potential may be attributed to the advent of high-speed railroads. A secondary city's average market price is predicted to rise by 4.5% for every 10% increase in the city's market potential. It is in favor of environmental sustainability and energy independence. Compared to cars and airplanes, which depend more on imported petroleum, Electric trains can run on a wider range of energy sources, including renewables, and use less energy per unit of transportation of people and cargo. It creates a domestic market for high-speed rail equipment. China's entry into the high-speed rail market is also making it a major supplier of high-speed rail construction technologies. Chinese train manufacturers have swiftly assimilated new technology and localized manufacturing methods, and even started to face off against outside vendors in the export market. This updated design modified the concept of the network layout from four vertical and four horizontal corridors to eight vertical and eight horizontal corridors, as the advantages of high-speed services became clear. Of course, numerous more regional and intercity train linkages complement all of them. As a result, the earlier 2020 goal for the railway network was changed to 150,000 kilometers, including 30,000 kilometers, of high-speed lines built to provide high-speed services to more than 80% of all big and medium-sized Chinese cities. Even more intriguing is the fact that this design was completed within the deadline. China has enterprises that specialize in the planning, building, and surveying of infrastructure projects. It also has enterprises that manufacture trains, safety signals, and other essential equipment. Four primary divisions typically comprise a high-speed supply chain, construction, equipment production, technological development, and operation management. In China's instance, the capacity to execute every stage of the project independently from design to operation, as well as having a fully autonomous supply chain are crucial factors. China's high-speed network has created a market that is big enough to allow each of these branches to grow to its full potential. Critics from both domestic and international quarters have questioned the need for a costly high-speed rail system in a country that is primarily developing and where the majority of workers cannot afford to pay more for speedier transit. The administration has defended the costly project by pointing to its promotion of many policy goals. We may all presume that China's initiatives must have a net beneficial impact 
just by looking at their future intentions. In terms of plans, or more accurately, plans for 2035, China intends to build a railway network spanning 200,000 kilometers, of which 70,000 kilometers will be high-speed lines. China's desire to build high-speed rail lines was prompted by the country's traffic demands. In China's instance, they were identified, evaluated, and integrated right away into important national development objectives. Following that, those plans were carried out with great care and little room for error. This was important, but not very important. The tight autonomous supply industry circle and the meticulous standardization of operations were the two important things. Nonetheless, China's successes continue to be mostly driven by its political will and vision. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and enable the notification bells.